everybody. I'm Zias Caravalla from ZK Research, back for day four of the 12 Days of Cloudmas. And I'm joined, I'm delighted to be joined by Aaron Kelly, who's the GM of Product Marketing for AWS. Aaron, why don't you ha say hi to everybody? Hey, everyone. It's great to be here. And uh, thanks for having me, Zias. Yeah, before we get started, though, I want to test your memory as a kid. And I want to ask you, when you remember singing the 12 Days of Christmas, do you remember what day four was? Four calling birds, is that right? You're bingo. You're the first guy that's got that right. Three and two to know. One, everybody knows, is a partridge in a pear tree. AWS, I find a, to be a fascinating company. There's arguably no company around that has disrupted more industries uh, than Amazon has, uh, both on the consumer side and on the IT side. And I recently attended Andy Jassy's keynote at your recent re-event conference, and he talked about how Amazon loves to live in these markets that need reinventing. And so... You're best known for compute, database storage, all those great cloud services, but you've been in communications now, you know, for a few years. And I'm curious, what was it about the communications industry that Amazon saw that thought it needed reinventing that caused you guys to jump in with both feet like you have? Sure. Yeah, you know, I think communications like those other markets you describe really benefits from high reliability, security, performance, global reach, which are all things that we deliver. Uh, with the AWS platform. And in many cases, we get into these markets because we're hearing from customers about the need to bring that same scale, reliability, performance to these, to these different markets. And in some cases, like in the case of Amazon Connect, AD Amazon itself was looking for a scalable contact center solution, couldn't find one on the market. And so we built it ourselves, and we realized that, hey, this is pretty valuable. Um, let's bring this to market as a standalone solution. So that's been a theme um, across our portfolio, including communications. Yeah, and I guess uh, if you think of how ubiquitous communications has become, we all use it every day. You know, clearly the need to scale has become important. But uh, it's it from what I've seen, it's been more than just scale that's interested in uh, Amazon. Uh, in fact, you have two products. You mentioned Connect, which is a contact center platform. We'll talk about that in a minute. Mm -hmm. But you also have your uh, meetings platform called Chime. And mm -hmm. um, I know you take a bit of a different approach to the meeting space than most of the traditional vendors. So uh, uh, give us a little uh, educational lesson on, 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 how, on what Chime is and, and how it's you know, maybe different than what people are used to. Sure, sure. So Chime has sort of two sides to it. The first is the meeting app experience where customers really like Chime for one, because it calls you. So it, we have better on-time uh, attendees because Chime actually calls you right before the meeting starts. So those days of, oh, wait, when's my meeting start or how do I get in? It actually calls you and brings you in, which is kind of a feature customers like. And in addition, it's a pay-as-you-go pricing model. So rather than paying up front for an entire month of, of service, you only pay the days you use it. So those are the two reasons why customers like the, the Chime meeting app. But what we're seeing and we've seen since the beginning of the pandemic was a real desire by ISVs in particular to video and voice enable their applications. And so the Chime SDK over the last six months has really taken off across this community. Um, customers like Slack have bet on the Chime SDK as their video voice and meeting solution within the Slack experience. Salesforce is a new solution anywhere, which is coming out next year, is gonna use the Chime SDK and that capability. And then we've also seen many ISVs in the healthcare space, like Cerner and others that are betting on this as a way of, again, video and voice enabling their applications so that we can have a dialogue with my customers or partners, et cetera, in context of the work I'm trying to get done. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. It's, it's also interesting that Salesforce bought Slack and they're both your customers. So maybe right. it made that easier for them. Uh, you know, you, you talk about the importance of being able to embed applications uh, or video and voice into applications. Uh, and it reminds me back to, if you're familiar with the No Jitter website, mm -hmm. uh, that used to be a paper magazine called uh, Business Communication Review. The very last article I wrote for the magazine, I think it was back in 04, talked about that trend, how users don't actually want more apps on their desktop, right? Mm -hmm. They want more features built into the apps that they already have. So mm -hmm. I guess 15, 16 years later, we're finally doing that. <laughs> That's right. Uh, That's right. Now, in addition to Chime, you mentioned uh, Connect before, which is a contact center platform, and mm -hmm. and this is a. It, I was I was really fascinated by you guys jumping into this space because it's about as mature an industry as there is. 
it's got some long-standing vendors in it. And I, and I thought, I don't know if Amazon's going to have a lot of success where I pop into a market with so many strong incumbents, mm -hmm. but you've had tremendous success. And uh, so tell me a little bit about Connect and your approach there and why customers like what you guys are doing. Sure. Well, Connect's an omni-channel cloud contact center that's really easy to get started and really easy to modify to meet your business needs. And so that ease of use, that ability to scale up and scale down and our pay-as-you-go pricing, those three factors have really helped Connect um, build a lot of momentum in this space. So unlike other solutions where you're paying upfront for per user fees for each of your agents, the pay-as-you-go pricing allows you to scale up and scale down and lower costs. We act with the cloud scalability to changes in the market, which has never been more important than the last six months with the pandemic. Yeah, and... Um underpinning both your products, I guess, is this AI layer as well. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I attended a lot of the reInvent sessions and it seemed like AI was a theme that's, I mean, pervasive through almost everything AWS is doing. So uh, 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 tell me how, how you think AI is going to change communications because it's, uh, it's changed everything else. Yeah. Oh, well, we're seeing AI have a huge impact on our contact center business and connect. And many of the announcements that you talked, to, you know, you kind of hinted at during reInvent were ways we're bringing machine learning and AI into the contact center to improve the agent experience, improve the caller experience and help customers both save money from their contact center and improve customer satisfaction. So it's pretty exciting. So can you tell me about what those announcements were? Sure, sure. So I like to think about them. There were five big new features that we provided for Amazon Connect. And I like to think about them in the, in the, uh, in the context of a call, I call it the anatomy of a call. So the first one is uh, Amazon Connect Voice ID. So when you call in, you as a caller can choose to opt into this, this service, which what we'll do is we'll record you talking, create a digital voice print and use ML now the next time you call to match uh, your call with that existing digital voice print. And what's great about this is one, it gives you as a caller a higher level of kind of security, knowing that there's going to be less fraud associated with this particular customer you're working with. But probably more importantly, it eliminates the need for all of those, what's your mother's maiden name? What's your favorite color? What was your date of birth kind of questions as I'm trying to you know, qualify who you are. By using the digital voice print, I as an agent would receive a score and say, yep, um, Zia's called and he is above our threshold. That's him based on his tone and volume and pitch. Um, we're going to go ahead and move past those qualifying questions and get going right to what he, what he needs for me as an agent. So better caller experience using ML to do that. Um, and if for some reason you, the call landed below that threshold, I could then do those follow-up questions or bring in a fraud specialist. So again, using ML to help improve that initial call experience. The, the second stage, the second big feature is Amazon Connect customer profiles, where now we're bringing together information from different systems into a unified profile so that when you call in, I'm not pecking around in my ERP system or my order management system to find out what, you know, what, what your, uh, your profile looks like. I have it all with me as an agent. That creates a more efficient experience. Trigger Grills was one of our beta customers here, and it's great for the agents because now I know what grill you have. So I don't have to ask you, maybe you don't know the model number. I know what grill you have so we can get started a lot faster. So we're really excited about uh, customer profiles. Now, the third one is contact lens for Amazon Connect. And we released that last year, which does uh, uses machine learning to do speech to text translation and sentiment analysis, which then after the call would allow, say, a supervisor to see what calls are going well, not going well. Are there certain trends that are important? But what we released here at reInvent was to make that real time. So now in real time, we were able to go speech to text, sentiment analysis, as well as identify keywords. So keywords like refund, or I'm not happy, or can I do a return, can automatically trigger a, a flag for a supervisor and they can decide, hey, Aaron needs some help with this call. Zias is, you know, has an issue. I can back channel and give, give Aaron some support so I can create a better experience for you um, based on that in real time. So again, using machine learning in real time to help improve the call experience. Now the fourth one, Amazon Connect Wisdom, uses machine learning to search now all the wikis and SharePoint sites and knowledge base to bring that information and recommends to me as an agent now, how can I help you? And 
it is based, I can, as an agent, type in a question or an ask into Wisdom, and I'll get back results across these services. Or it can use the real-time input from contact lens and in real time, push me recommendations based on your question. So if you're asking about a refund or a new product release, I'll get pushed in my wisdom panel um, information about refund policy for this particular grill model or um, you know, information about new product releases, et cetera. So now it's using ML to bring me the information I need. So I'm more empowered, I'm more informed, and I can get your answer faster. And then the last one is Amazon Connect Task, which about half of an agent's time is spent on follow-up items and being able to track that now in the same way that I track calls and chats in the same workflow um, is, really, is really very powerful. So now as an agent, I get a follow-up item like I need to give you a refund. I can create that task. It's now tracked, either assigned back to me or my supervisor can look at across my contact center agents and see who has capacity and assign those tasks to them. So we're trying to take everything from the initial calling experience, streamlining that, having a more personalized profile. So I, as an agent, know your background, giving sentiment analysis in real time to see if I need help, pushing recommendations or information to me in real time during the call so I can better assist you, and then making sure that there's a more robust mechanism for follow-up, either with me, another agent, or in some cases, fully automating tasks to just Ex execute without me engaging. So we're really trying to look holistically at that call and make improvements in each area. Well, the next time I call into a contact center and if I uh, don't get asked those annoying questions and I'll, I'll know they're using your product. So thanks for that. <laughs> um, and now it is uh, late in the year, it's December. And one of the things I always like to do with thought leaders is put, look into your crystal ball and give me a prediction for 2021. What can we expect to see in the communication industry in 2021 that's kind of new or fun? Yeah, I think we're going to continue to see a bunch of momentum in communications where uh, more and more experiences are going to be video and voice enabled in situ. So we talked about, you know, Cerner for healthcare. We're going to see more telehealth. We're going to see more scenarios like that. I think that's one big trend that I see continuing next year. Uh, the second one is we're going to continue to see machine learning and AI playing a role in optimizing experiences, both quality, performance, as well as providing those recommendations to things like contact center agents or even um, employees to help them perform their work better uh, and, and better optimize th those, those key experiences. And then the last one is I just continue to see the shift of some of these industries to the cloud for that scale up, scale down, flexibility, agility that comes uh, next year. So I think all three of those trends we're going to see continue to, to happen in, in 2021. Well, thank you, Aaron Kelly. That was fabulous. Uh, Aaron Kelly from Amazon Web Services. Uh, I'm Zias Caravello from ZK Research uh, saying uh, that's the end of day four of the 12 days. I'll be back with day five. Have a happy holidays and have a happy cloudless. Maybe it'll become as popular as Festivus. So thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Zias.